if you are only thinking about the ideas that you want to play, especially when they are new ideas and, and you're still struggling to find them, then you're not actually paying attention to the things that people are listening to because they don't know about your ideas and they know about the new uh, quartal stuff you've been practicing or this outside idea or this triplet lick. They don't know any of that. They only hear what you play. And if your sound and time are suffering because you are trying to, to hear these new things, they only hear that. They hear, well, yeah, it's a good player. That, like, it's great ideas, but I don't know. It doesn't swing, right? Or So there's this discussion in my Discord. I have a new channel there called um, Improv Challenge. And basically people can um, put improvisations of themselves playing a tune that I just talked about. So in, uh, it was uh, like someone in love. I talked about it last time. And some people put some really nice stuff, but I reacted to someone, a good player. I I want to read the discussion that follows because I think a lot of people are struggling with this and um, I can share my, my, my thoughts. I'm not sure that my thoughts are the best thinking on this subject, but it's the way I play. I wrote to this person, I said, very satisfying to listen to, man. The fact that you managed to play all these great phrases at the right time is a marvel. Because he was playing lots of great licks, right? Um, many more ideas than I would generally play in a solo. He, he played lots of great stuff, uh, stuff from my books also. Um, yeah, full of ideas. You have set the foundation to become one of those players that you want to transcribe every phrase. And by that I mean is that uh, there's there's these people that play and you actually basically want to stop at after every lick phrase to describe it because you, you just heard an idea or a couple of ideas that you really want to learn yourself. Because there are also these players, on the other hand, that play nice and it's very pleasant to listen to, but you don't have the urge to stop and transcribe. But that could be because you don't like it. It's, it's a personal thing, of course. But some players also have... Um, they don't have this very defined way of... or this very defined vocabulary. They just play nice. And um, that, that is great in itself. I think the, the very best players are the people that both play great, they sound great. So I mean like timing, sound, uh, flow, I'm going to talk about that. But then also they have very interesting vocabulary. For whatever reason you think it is interesting, could be because it's based on a certain concept you like or it's just very connected to a certain tradition. And th those are the like the, the top of the top, right? Something like... In Gypsy Jazz, someone like Stochola Rosenberg or um, Angelo de Bar or Pérez de la Graine, uh, Adrien Monnard, Gonzalo Bergara. There's, there's a bunch of these players that they have great sound, timing, um, projection, um, charisma maybe, even that counts, uh, stage presence, but they also have great vocabulary and there's everything you hear, you think, oh man, what is that? And you want to stop the recording or you want to stop the concert and, and ask them, can you play that again, but slowly? But which of these two things is more important, though, that you have great vocabulary or that you just sound nice all the time? And that's what this discussion is about, in fact. Because so the next I, I write, the phase you're in now is a tough one. It's where you know exactly what you want or can play. And when you think about it, it all flows. So that I mean by that is that um, maybe you, you're on your way to the gig or um, you just sit at home, think about the solo and you see all these ideas and you imagine it to be very smooth transitions between one idea and the next idea. But then, all right, but in real life you get stuck at points and that is frustrating. And by that I mean is that you just not are fast enough with changing the idea, uh, you miss the next chord, you, you forget your your place in the harmony, uh, maybe your timing is off and that throws you off or whatever reason, you're not flowing anymore. And that's frustrating. And I say, I remember that phase well. Because I, I had that phase, or I still have that sometimes, especially the people like me that study a lot of vocabulary and new vocabulary all the time, because that's what I like to do. It's very easy to fall for this trap where you're constantly trying to play it at the gig or a jam and missing the opportunity to play it. And that is messing with everything else. It's messing with your sound. It's messing with your time. 
most of your time, it's messing with your ability to listen to what's going going on around you and therefore messing with your sensibilities towards playing with other musicians, right? So one obvious solution would be to not think anymore while you are performing. Just let the ideas that come to mind without forcing it come naturally, even when you think you should be able to do more. Just think about that before and after you play, during practice, or when you review your playing, but not during. And this is a very difficult thing to do, especially if you are practicing a lot, because it's very natural that you want to be playing what you are practicing. But that never goes right. <laughs> Almost never. Usually it will make you sound worse than you can. Because if you are only thinking about the ideas that you want to play, especially when they are new ideas and, and you're still struggling to find them, then you're not actually paying attention to the things that people are listening to because they don't know about your ideas and they know about the new uh, quartal stuff you've been practicing or this outside idea or this triplet lick. They don't know any of that. They only hear what you play. And if your sound and time are suffering because you are trying to, to hear these new things, they only hear that. They hear, well, yeah, it's a good player. Like, great ideas, but I don't know. It doesn't swing, right? Or, I mean, his sound is... It's not projecting. Because what happens also is when you play these new ideas, maybe you're not paying attention to your right hand and you're playing over the hole, right? You're not paying attention to your vibrato. You're not paying attention to your phrasing. Like you're playing main, too many notes maybe. And then your sound suffers and people hear that. I would hear that if I would be in the audience and I wouldn't know you. That's what I would hear. I wouldn't be able to tell, oh man, he's... Yeah, I can see he's practicing those um, those West Montgomery octaves. Yeah, and he's oh, he's really trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, if I know you and I, I live in your same house or you're a student of mine, I would know that and I would appreciate it. But in the end, that's not the way to play if you are performing. David Jackman writes back, so during practice and before, after, think about the ideas, but while playing, just let things com come out without thinking about them. And I say, yes. Even when you feel you're repeating yourself, it doesn't matter. Just focus on the swing and the flow. That's the only thing that should be in your mind while you're performing. And this repeating thing is much less of a problem than you think. Of course, if you are playing the same lick all the time, uh, exactly the same way, then it's a problem. But usually you're not doing that. Usually you are making little changes because you will have the awareness, especially when it's stuff that comes naturally to you, or stuff that you can play, you have the awareness of not playing it exactly the same way. Right? A lick that I play a lot is this one. Uh, so it's a 2 5 1 to C. 1, 2, 3, 4, G7. So D minor 7. C, right? I like to play this. That's a lick I really like. Now, let's say um, it, it's followed by a 2 5 one in B flat. So C minor 7, F7, B flat. Then I would never play this exactly the same way. Instead, I would maybe do something like one, two, three. It's the same idea, but I would make subtle changes. And that is enough to not sound like you're repeating yourself all the time. Believe me, I know exactly what's going through your mind while you made that video, but I can hear few you are thinking too hard while playing. Yeah, and the, the reason I can um, hear that is because it starts to mess mostly with timing. And I... I Notice that for him, because he is a, a jazz super grandmaster, so it's a person that level to the highest level in my Discord. And to do that, you have to send in exercises. And almost every exercise he sent in, the swing was impeccable. Why? Because the only thing he was focusing on was playing those exercises, which are ideas that you practice all the time. So you're not trying to uh, improvise there, right? It's just practicing ideas in multiple keys. And 
then when you perform, you're only busy with, okay, how does it sound? Am I, am I playing it correctly? How's the timing? And then that sounds great. And the, the way I can tell that he was trying too many ideas is because it started messing actually with that timing. Not too much, though, but a little bit. And also with the flow, right? And the flow, I mean, is that you get stuck. I, I, there's a nice phrase, and then it gets stuck, and there's a hole there. There is this hole that sounds awkward. It's not a hole that was made there to stop a phrase. Uh, I, will, I will demonstrate later. But it's like, it's an awkward sound. It's like, oh, something is going wrong here, and then waiting for the chord to change for the next idea. Of course, that's just an impression I had. I could be wrong there. I realized that, but... That's how it felt to me. So forcing more variety in your playing in such detail, which means like, okay, I want to play this phrase, I want to play that phrase, will always be at the cost of flow and timing, and that's not worth it. Don't get me wrong, it's good to be aware of playing varied, but focus more on bigger concepts like chords, triplets, rests, octaves, blues, bebop, diminished. So with that, I mean that you don't really think about, okay, I have to play phrase number five, 8, 12, and then 22. Now it's more like, okay, I played a lot of diminished stuff. Maybe it's time for some blues. Or I played a lot of notes. Maybe let's try some shorter phrases with rests. Or too many notes, let's do some chords. Or too many chords, <laughs> let's do some notes. So it's, it's really like a meta. Uh, it's more like you are a, a uh, director or something, like a, a musical director. Right? You're, you're standing in front of the band and you're directing the band and you're listening to everyone and then you notice that the trumpet player is playing way too many triplets. You, you don't know anything about his vocabulary. You cannot say to him, listen, I don't want you to play that phrase. I want you to play one of the other phrases, uh, the one that you played. No, it's more like, okay, you're playing a lot of triplets. Could you maybe also play some eighth notes, right? It's more like of these meta concepts and that is something that you can be aware of while playing and still take care of timing and... Uh, and flow. Yeah, okay, let me see. Let's go on. Yeah, that, he said, that's interesting. It reminds me of what people who do very quick sports say, like table tennis or boxing. They think about tactics and strategy up until they actually perform, then it's just automatic. Yes, but I do think actually they still think about strategy because the tactics is a small, is like thinking about the phrase, right? Tactics is, is an in the moment decision. That is probably all automatic. It's trained, right? Uh, you train these drills to be able to duck for uh, for jabs or something. But strategy is, is a bigger concept. It's more like, okay, I should be calm in the first two rounds, and then in the third round, I should go for the knockout. So I think you should still think about strategy, which is more like the chords, uh, triplets, and um, the rest and the octaves. But forget about the tactics, which would be the licks. That's the way I would see it. Um, the same would go for table tennis. Like they do all these drills, like they do uh, uh, backhand drives, right? They do like 20, uh, 280 in a row with the backhand and the forehand, and then do all these drills uh, playing uh, a drop shot followed by a wide backhand, something like that. They forget about that during the game because that should all be just drilled into the muscle memory, but they do still think about strategy, like, okay, I need to be, I need to wear this guy out, so uh, have long rallies, try to go for the long rallies in the first uh, game, right, if you look at, like, a top table tennis player, like, uh, Ruin Filas, like, who's a defender, one of the few defenders in the top, like, that's his strategy, basically, he tries to wear out his opponents, and then he starts attacking later on in the match, and he wins lots of games with that. Okay, let's go on. So here it says, sometimes in your videos, you do a practice course, and before you do it, you announce which ideas you will do where. Is that something you do at all in actual playing situation or just to demonstrate concepts? I never do that in real playing. I only do that in videos, and that's the reason why I sometimes sound, I, especially when I listen to myself, I don't sound as good as I can sound. And also people sometimes say that in the comments, right? Like, oh, it sounds a little bit... Uh, uh, not flowing, or it sounds something is off. But the reason for that usually is because I'm trying to demonstrate a certain concept, and it is so difficult to do because that means I have to be aware of, of every note I play all the time to make sure I'm playing the concept at the right time. And then to 
it is possible to do that, but it's very difficult then to also play nice. It's just difficult to do because the one thing almost excludes me focusing on the other thing. Okay, yeah, so, so I say, no, I never do it, and it's also very hard to do. I feel like I'm in, a, I'm in a prison when I have to demonstrate that, but I got used to it. Yeah, I got used to it, but I still feel very constrained. And um, it's not only with guitar, by the way. It's also with violin, where I, um, I want to demonstrate... Oh, actually, it's an exercise, and it's a good exercise. Uh, it's where you say to a violin player, I never do it with guitar, although I have done similar things. But with violin, I would say, okay, we can only improvise on the lowest two strings. You cannot go above. And then you put yourself into a, a prison where you, try, where you are trying to be sound good by limiting yourself. And of course, you won't sound as good as when you don't have these limits, but it's a very good exercise. But that's the thing, it's an exercise. I would never advise for someone to do that on a gig, right? So when I demonstrate these concepts in a video, some people think I'm playing a solo there, like I'm improvising free, but that's almost never the case. I'm always demonstrating a certain concept. Um, so he says, do you think it's a good way to practice? And I, of course, that's, it's a great way to practice. You want to put yourself in a prison, prison cells like that all the time during practice. And that's what you want to do. Also, I don't understand how that can be possible with some of the solos that exist, because they seem so elegantly constructed. For instance, right, Charlie Parker or Django or now Pasquale Gasso, a good example. And the answer is more time experience. And what that I mean is that they are still playing with what I'm with the concept I just said, like just focusing on swinging, playing together with the band. But you still hear all of those great ideas. Uh, the reason they can do it is for them, those ideas are just part of the flow. And that just takes time. It takes time and practice. I know for certain that it's true because when I hear myself play like five years ago and now, I hear many more ideas. There's also ideas that I played back then I don't play anymore, so they didn't stuck, stick around. But I hear new ideas and that's not because I'm focusing on these new ideas. It's because they just got into my playing and... But if you then, let's say you hear me play five years ago, that's person A, live, and then person B, that's me five years after that, performing right after it, then an audience member, audience member would say, oh, that second person, it's me five years in the future, is um, more creative or has more ideas. Um, or it's maybe they think he's more paying attention to his line, so it's more creative. No, it, they're doing exactly the same thing. They're focusing on the flow and the timing, but the second guy just has more, had more time to incorporate more ideas, to refine it more and more experience. I'm going to demonstrate some exercises that you could do. So let's find a simple tune. Let's take, um, I can give you anything but love. What I usually do is the first thing I let make people do that are, are, are not connected to the flow, but usually they are not connected to the flow because they, they never experienced that, right? In the case of um, David, I think it was just because he was trying too much to play many, too many ideas. But the first thing I would do is make them sing a solo. But it would be a solo only with rhythms, right? So it has to be like, the notes, I don't care. So we'll, we'll skip it for now. I'm just going to do the second exercise. Second exercise is that you can only play one note. So let's pick a technical note. I think a D would be good, right? So let's take this D. So now the exercise is that you can, you can play anything you want, or not anything you want. You can only play eighth notes, swinging eighth notes. So it should sound like three, four. And triplets, so. Or something like that. No quarter notes. You cannot play. But you can also stop. So you can play eighth notes and you can stop, like a rest. And then you, when you start again, it's eighth notes and triplets, mostly, mostly eighth notes. Now try to play some kind of attractive thing, attractive solo. So try to make some phrases. With phrases, I mean that you start something and you end something. Try to make it interesting. So for instance, don't start every phrase on beat one. Don't end every phrase on beat one, something like that. So let's try it. Well, first, play a little bit of the theme to get the chords in our heads.
Now a quarter notes. Yeah, something like that. Now, it's amazing how many people cannot actually do that and still sound off, right? So they still sound, they're not flowing or it doesn't, the timing is not there. So that means they're not focusing on it or they didn't work on those experts aspects enough. So a second exercise would be to do two notes. Then you have a little bit of freedom. So let's do... Um, I'm going to do the same thing now, but two notes. So I can play... Let's think about patterns I can play when I want to play triplets. So I can do... Uh, or something like that. Only eighth notes, no quarter notes. So... Usually when I do this exercise with someone, I stop them as soon as they start playing quarter notes. Let me show you what it would sound like if I start playing quarter notes. Okay, I stop them. I stop them means no, no quarter notes. Because, it, not because quarter notes are uh, bad to play, but it's bad to play it like this. Because when you play quarter notes like this, when you just play repeating quarter notes, it's usually because you are waiting for the chord to change to start a new phrase. Then it would just be better to not play there and have a rest. So that's why in this exercise you cannot play quarter notes. So do that for a couple of choruses until it really feels good, like you're feeling you're swinging. Usually when that happens, you start bobbing your head on the beat. That means that you're really connecting to the beat. Okay, now let's play normal solo. But it doesn't matter what I play. Well, it, it does matter. I have to still play lines that I do, I think, fit the chords. But I'm not judging any mistakes. I'm only focusing on the swing, the timing, playing only eighth notes or in triplets. Uh, no quarter notes. notes Thank you. 
Right, so now um, next step would be to be completely free. So because now I couldn't play quarter notes, right? So I, and then I did it a couple of times and I was immediately aware, okay, I'm playing quarter notes here, don't do it. Now I have total freedom. So what I'm trying to do is connect to that same feeling I just had, but with a little bit more freedom. So maybe try to think about those meta ideas like chords, octaves, triplets, um, uh, blues, right? Try to be meta about it, not think about specific things. Right, so um, of course you cannot really get away from being completely um, only be thinking. I mean, it's, you're only you're always gonna think, ah, oh, man, that, that one idea would be really nice to play. Right, I I felt it now. Like there was, I played this, the Django uh, Christoph changes, and I was like, oh, next course I should play the other one. Like. But the point is that that came naturally. Like, that idea came naturally. I wasn't like, I didn't start out playing the solo with like, okay, I got to play these two Django Christoph changes. Like, I played one and then the other one just came to mind. But it came to mind, yeah, really far in advance. But still, I was trying not 
to let that distract me from focusing on time and um, sound. I still think it could have been a little bit better, but it wasn't bad. Okay, let me tune. So, any questions about that? Every time you are feeling like you're stuck or um, it doesn't flow, it could be good to do that exercise with the um, uh, to this exercise with one note. Well, uh, David, we could do the same tune, uh, same exercise. But can you give me a tune like that, uh, or is Yarpet Suite a good example? Do you think Yarpet Suite is a good example? But uh, let's let's do uh, Yarpet Suite.